Hey there, guys. Um, so, I'm me, and this is my son. He's a little camera shy. But uh, here we are in quarantine, and uh, school's out for, well, gosh, I don't know until when. And we thought we would take advantage of the day to tap into the world of Arduino. And what we're going to do is, uh, do you remember what number the project is, buddy? Project uh, number? Pop, I know what it's called. What's it called? Popla. I think it's like page 124. Okay, the pop lock. And what the pop lock does is if you make a noise, like knock on a table, it creates a, cir a circuit or a, a system that detects that noise within a certain parameter. And then if it hears that parameter, whatever it is, it will send a message to a little servo motor to lock or unlock. So it's called a knock lock. And we're going to do that and document it and show you how it goes. Cheers. Hey guys, I am here. My name is Reese and I'm here with my son, Evan. I'm not sure what hand up or down we wave with, but uh, we're going to do an Arduino based project. Mm -hmm. And what's it called, Evs? Knock lock. Knock, knock lock. lock. And number 12. Yeah, number 12. Now, number 12 of what? Well, let me give you a little bit of background. Um, what is an Arduino, if you don't know? So, this little beast, which happens to be in a plexi case, is an Arduino. And Arduino, an Arduino is basically a, a controller, an input output controller. And it was invented in Italy at a university for people who were or students who were looking for a way to not have to buy really expensive equipment to do logic control type experiments and they came up with this thing so this is a genuine Arduino and you can tell it's genuine a because it says made in Italy but that little component right hang on let me focus this thing right there you see that you see how it's kind of gold color Here. well that means it's a real arduino now evan's gonna show you where it is right there so real genuine arduinos copyright Good stuff. Um, now, Arduino will sponsor us. <laughs> Arduino is not sponsoring us. No. We also have this model here, and this is also. Um, it runs like an Arduino, but it is a Chinesium Arduino. Uh, a lot less expensive. Uh, somewhat less reliable, perhaps. Uh, but you may notice there is no gold part. <laughs> Evan, would you like to point to the lack of gold part? Should be like right here, but yes, it's no, not. no gold. This is not the gold here, standard. Compare them. But for our purposes, we can use a lot of these in our experiments and get through. The nice thing about Arduino is it's open code um, so the software you use provided by Arduino and they don't really mind so much if you use these guys now this particular model of Arduino this is an Arduino Uno and that refers to the size of this board now we do have other types of Arduino and I don't I don't have the board actually but I have a case for one that are 3d printed <laughs> just to show you the kind of size difference so there's a whole range there's bigger than this smaller than this but they all run off the Arduino IDE okay so I'd given you a little bit of background about Arduinos and I was able to pop the top off one of my cases to show you this cute little guy that's an other type of Arduino board this one's actually called a nano and again this one is 
Mm, Trinesium. It might not be genuine Arduino, but it will work. Back to this. So, what this is, this comes from a kit. A starter kit for Arduino folks who want to try their hand at various experiments. And it comes with some supplies. Some very good, good hand dance there, buddy. Um, so it comes with stuff like uh, capacitors. Uh, what else? Resistors. Resistors. Motors. LEDs. LEDs. Hold on. All sorts of things um, that you can assemble Switches. together. It also comes with something called a breadboard. And if you're not into electronics and you've never seen a breadboard before, I must have a breadboard laying around here somewhere. It's not actual bread. It really isn't. Okay, this is a really big one. But what it is, it almost looks like a cribbage board for you old folks. But it's got a bunch of holes that you can plug leads into. And, oh, sorry, messy. Here's probably a more normal sized breadboard. And that's like one that we'll use. So if you look at this board, there we've got a little push button. And what are these called, Fs? Resistors. These are resistors, and resistors come in different sizes. Mm -hmm. And then we've got just some lead wires in here. But this way. Now, this one is hooked up already to another unit. That's another little project I've got on the go. But uh, we won't talk about that just yet. But that one involves a hookup to a servo. A servo. And what is a servo, Evs? Um... Mm -hmm. They have motors in them. They're like they they move like this while we're yeah. Uh -huh. You got it. You got it. So these little arms will move through 180 degrees, and there's a bunch of gears, and then there's a little DC motor in there. So a servo has a limited range of motion, but you can control it so that it moves a very tight in a very tight spec it only moves a certain number of degrees so the experiment the knock lock actually involves a servo so i'm kind of kind of glad that happened so what else does the knock lock involve <coughs> see that's a that's servo, servo motor there's a capacitor and resistors capacitors different types of resistors and what resistors do is if you think of electricity as water pipe. yeah running through a pipe yeah mm -hmm. yeah what do resistors do they with the water block or slow slow or slow they control the intensity of flow. current that's right of flow so that's what resistors do and they're measured in ohms and there's this funky law called ohms law we won't get into it right away but just in this case, all you need to know, different color stripes means different ohm resistance. So 1 mega ohm, 220 ohm, 10 kilo ohm. It's basically how hard do these guys put the brakes on the water current coming through, which isn't water, it's electricity. Mm -hmm. I also have an LED. If you didn't know that uh, LEDs are actually diodes, which let the electricity electricity go one way and not the other so it stands for light emitting diode and it's a cool fact sweet what does the switch do uh turns on and off that's right so a switch if you imagine a a wire with a break in it and you reattach the wire it completes the circuit and if you separate the wire it breaks the circuit so a switch all it does is basically rejoins a gap in the wire or the circuit so there we go on to the knock lock all right dear do we know sorry okay. so we have pretty much all our um ingredients for the knock lock we have the switch the led 
the resistors, the capacitor, the male header pins. We only need three. And um, we unbox, we're gonna unbox the servo specially for you. Oh, we have to build it. Um, but that's fine. Right here. This is the servo parts. Next, uh, we found some a breadboard and jumper wires for this, and <clears throat> this piezo, is, it isn't from the kit because my dad uh, misplaced it somewhere, or I don't know what he did. But do you want to explain what happened? Well, um, I think we might have uh, used this piezo in another project. So what we've done is we have show show the picture. We got. Okay, there, right there, we'll focus. This is a slightly different one from another source. And we think that we can substitute it for this. But stay tuned, we'll see. Mm -hmm. Okay, you want to unpack the jumper wires? Sure. Need a break one. Nothing else? Okay, turn it okay. upside down. Here's a breadboard. Did I... It's just a sticky backing on the breadboard. Oh, okay. So that's a nice sized breadboard. There's my thumb. So it's a nice tiny one. Uh, my thumb. <laughs> there we go. This big one. Okay, so there's the unpacking and the setup. I think we have everything we need Here, I'm gonna put this back. to move forward. See you in the kitchen. Okay, so our first lesson is we look at the parts you required. And it always pays to actually read the instructions because when we flip to the next page, look at that. It's not just an LED, it's three LEDs of different colors and each three, each of the three LEDs requires its own resistor to protect it. Because if we powered the circuit and we didn't have resistors protecting the LEDs, they would fry. So that's our first learning. So we'll get back to you once we're fully prepared. Okay, guys. This is called a piezo device. And you know, little games and stuff, they buzz. It's kind of a speaker. It takes electromagnetic vibrations through a coil and it shakes a little diaphragm and it pushes air. And it, it's basically a little speaker. So we can get this guy in here now. If you look at these things, there's a little plus sign or a leg will be red. So it means that it wants current to go one of two ways. It wants a, a positive flow on one side. So anyway, I'm just going to plunk this into the breadboard and just give you a close up on a breadboard here. Those two little legs, we apply some pressure. Now on a breadboard, you see each of these rows, 16, 17, 18, 19, those guys are all connected. So if I stick something in hole number five of row 20, and I stick something else in row number one, they'll be connected. But row 19 and 20 aren't connected. So that's the way that mm. works. Oh, no, not, Evans. What? Not always. Oh. If they're if they're both on like one, two, three, four, five. If they're both on one, then they are connected. No, they're not. No. No. What? No, they're only connected this way across. They're not connected this way across. So uh, if I put something in row number one, okay. And in row number four, that's that's a way to bridge the two rows. But number one is not connected to number five by default. And then over yeah. here, something learned. Another thing, the plus and the minus that runs down here. So uh, that's the exception. In fact, maybe that's where I got a little bit confused. In this case, in these side pieces, yeah, that whole column is connected. So if I put power and on the left, on the plus side, in this top connector hole, yeah, the power will connect down to here. So that is the probably what you were thinking, my son. Okay, so there is P 
Okay, so. Oh my goodness. Oh, I was just informing the audience. Oh, you was just informing the audience. Well done. <laughs> Alright, I'll see you in a bit. Alright, so like I meant oh. Should we redo that? Okay, so like I mentioned in the beginning, LEDs are a type of diode. So that means that uh, the electricity only flows one way. So uh, if you notice that one of the legs uh, are l larger than the other, and that's because you really need to pay attention to which way the um, current is flowing. So. And what what will happen if you get a LED backwards? I mean, backwards yeah. short circuit uh no nothing will happen because um a diode is like a, a gate or a valve so if you try and push something backwards through a valve it just won't flow so an led put in backwards just won't light up and it won't let the circuit continue so there you go so what evs is going to do now is he's going to hook up the dot the uh, leds but he's also gonna here where's your hand buddy he's also gonna hook up what are these called again resistors and why do you want a resistor always in in couple with an led uh i don't want it to get too bright well oh. that's right in the way uh because if you allow the angry pixies that are electricity to just run 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 as much as they want through an LED, the LED won't be able to handle it. So you're right, it'll get so bright that it'll burn up. And this guy holds back a lot of the angry pixies so that uh, just enough get through. Could it cause a fire? Um, yeah, could potentially, I suppose. Um, but generally not. There are certain things that if you over overcurrent they will cause a fire so it's a uh, very good practice to make sure you've got the right resistors in front of any appliance cheers okay once again getting him we were getting impatient and we really should read the directions and go in order what it says is hook the power terminals up first so we looked in our kit and in the diagram it shows a black wire and a red wire well, kid didn't have a black wire, but I have another kit. It's got a blue wire, and blue's almost black, so just so as you know. All right, here we go. So we've got a plus here. We're going to plug a plus here on the loose end of the wire. And if we follow this, do, 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 where does it go? It goes to, what does it say? Uh, five volts five volts oh and if we check the instructions it also says five volts so here <laughs> i'm going to zoom in here for you if we look at all of these leads on the board you will see 3.3 volts and then five volts so that guy right there is where you want to be <laughs> zooming down again to here okay mr assistant mm -hmm. uh red to five volts can we do it it's a nice shot of your head good enough good enough okay so there's that brown haired is fine yeah now you know he's brown haired Okay, and if we follow the one of the black ones, it says go to the minus side of the board. And anytime you're on a circuit board, GND stands for ground. Ground, right, right, right. And ground is your negative. So there we go. Now we got a, a plus. And a minus hooked into the Arduino. The Arduino is going to have an adapter in there, so that's going to provide the power. The power is going to go from the Arduino to the board. So there's the first connection, and then we're going to make some other connections and make this rail live as well, or ready to be live with current. All right, so we just made the next step. So we took 
this rail here that's being powered from the Arduino negatively, and we jumpered negative to negative. So now mm -hmm. this <coughs> column has got negative to it. And then negative. down here, Evs, what do we do? Positive to positive. So that is now ready to go. Yep. Okay, guys, just want to show you, this is the, the bottom of the switch and it's square. So do I put it in the board this way or this way? Like, how does this switch work? And if you look at the bottom here, they've kind of, it looks like a river and I don't know, some houses on the side of a riverbank. If you think of it that way, this gap down the middle, that is the gap between two sides. So whatever you do, you want to set it so that that's where the gap is. So these two guys are actually, they're connected. These two guys are connected, but these two and these two are not, unless the button on the other side is depressed, which closes the gap. Okay. Okay, guys. So just a quick little update. We're just filling in some of the gaps. We've got some bridges built. We're wiring up from the positive over here to the switch. We've got one of the resistors in. We've got our piezo device. And on its negative leg, we've hooked up to the positive. Well, why did we hook a negative and a positive up together? Well, that's how the trains that our circuits go. Positive connects to negative. You don't really want to hook a positive to a positive necessarily mm -mm. well there are times yeah okay as my son points out um well ignore what i say you get the idea and then we've started to bridge over to some of the contacts in the arduino over here these are actually inputs that sense signals or will give uh, some current over two devices in this case it'll be sensing a noise and uh, we'll check back in in a sec okay evs has been wiring up a storm so now we've got our three led lights mm -hmm. that are protected by resistors. resistors that are then on one end connecting to the minus rail and on the other end, they're hopping over these yellow wires into the board mm -hmm. so that they can have some instructions. So now what we're left to do is if you look on the diagram over here, there's a servo. And what is this barrel shaped thing capacitor. called? A capacitor. Do you want to hold it up, Evs? Just the capacitor. Hold it up to the camera. Okay. All right. And focus camera. So what does a capacitor do? Well, Stores, stores yeah. electricity and then like it leaks it out. That's right. So you can think of it like a spring. So you put energy in and it kind of holds it there until you don't need it. Okay, you can put that down. Or uh, another way to think of it is a capacitor is almost like uh, a bucket of water. Sometimes voltages and currents are erratic. So if you think of a bunch of guys running around with squirt guns squirt 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 it's flying all over the place it's not regular but if they directed the squirt gun into a pail and started filling the pail and then you just had one little hole in the bottom of a pail and it could let out water at a regular rate that's kind of what a capacitor does it can either store electricity so when you need it it's there or it can calm it down yeah, like at some water parks, they have a big bucket. Yeah, they well, that's right. Store it up, and when it gets too full, they it dumps it on your head. Like, uh, what's that crazy water, wild water kingdom? What do they call it in Niagara I Falls? Uh -huh. I don't know. I haven't but... been there in a long time. All right, there we go. Okay, we had this row of what they call header pins, and then I took three and just snapped. And what we're going to do with these is here's our servo motor and then there's a little connector here 
but the connector's got holes and what we really want to fit into the breadboard are posts. So we're going to stick these in here and then we're going to connect it into the breadboard. So Evans and I were just talking about what does this circuit or this setup now that it's all put together, how does it work exactly? And I'm, I'm trying to break it down that this little piezo device is like your ears. And if it hears something, if it vibrates, it's going to send a little signal over here. It's almost like when you're fishing and you feel a vibration. How heavy is the vibration? How do I react? That's what this line is doing. So this side of the circuit, listening. This is just power. That's all it does. And then over here on this side, you've got four wires. Those three yellow wires are going to these three LEDs. And if it hears a little noise, it's going to tell this first yellow wire, hey, light up. And maybe it's green. I'm not sure. If it's a middle-sized noise, it's almost like uh, the three bears, right? Goldilocks. Then turn this one. If it's a pretty big noise, then light up the third one. And then if it's a really big noise, this green one it leads over to a control line for this servo. And if it hears a really big noise, the brain in here will say, all right, unlock the door. Or I suppose maybe in the Goldilocks and the wolf, lock the door. Mm -hmm. um, but that's what all of this is doing. And sorry, what's that, buddy? Don't make it confusing. No, oh, okay. Sorry, I'm just confusing things. All right, here we go. Oh, yeah. By the way, these two wires is just for power. Oh, yeah, just, just that's right. Yeah, you're right. They are just for power. The black and the red wires supply the motor in here with power. This white line going in is to signal it how much to turn. Okay, now that we have the basics of the setup, a slightly trickier thing comes in to play. The code. Unless you're copying. Unless you're copying, yeah, that's a good point. So anyway, what we're going to do now, we're going to go in to our computer and we're going to go into the Arduino IDE, which is the interface that you do your programming in. And then we're going to plug a cable in here and fire up the brain and let it do what it's supposed to do. But we'll, uh, we'll try and show you what we're doing along the way. Hey there. Okay, so we're on day two of the Arduino Knock Lock project. And if you recall, yesterday we rigged up this circuit board and today it's coding day so what I've pulled up here is the Arduino interface and in Arduino they've got some pre-built examples and the nice thing is under file examples Ooh. Ooh. starter kit they actually have something called knock lock and if I go click what it does is it pulls in the sketch that has all the codes that makes this thing run so I'm gonna close this one down for a sec because Evan and I have already been playing with this now in here, there's a variable that detects how loud a knock you give it. And we've those defaulted to 10 and 100. But in our case, we played around and it's best for our case if we set them to 15 and 75. So now, the other thing that we've done is, Evan, what's this thing called again? Do you remember? Piezo. Piezo, right? And it's kind of a buzzer speaker. 
And if you recall from the build, in the actual directions, it had it sitting on the board. But since it senses vibrations, what we've done is we've actually attached it to the desk. And what does that do? Hmm? What does that do if you attach it to the desk? Kind of senses the vibrations anywhere. Yeah, anywhere anywhere. around? Okay. Now we're going to come back to, to here. And for anyone who has never used an Arduino and don't really know the interface, when you code something, you need to load it into the board. And you connect it to a, via USB to the computer and you press this button. And what it does is it sends all the code over to the box. Now, if we go to tools, there is something called a serial monitor. And no, that's not somebody who checks how much Cheerios you eat. What it is, I know, that's a what cringeworthy joke? Is that, that's a dad joke. Okay, what it opens is a little status window. So, Evan, give me one knock on the table. What does it do? Oh, oh, oh wait, 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 sorry. Got to come back over here. Green light is on. That button, what does it do? Locks the... Okay, locks. and if you noticed, maybe you didn't notice, but we'll show you later, that servo just switched into the locked position. Mm -hmm. Now, up here, it says the box is locked. That was from the press button. And then it's going to check for a certain loudness to come through. And Evan, give one knock on the table. Oh, it says bad knock value. Two more knocks to go, because that knock was not loud enough. Why don't you thump it again? Ooh, one of those says valid knock value, 18. One more knock to go to unlock it. The box is unlocked. Right. So, you didn't get to see it, but the light changed to green, and mm -hmm. that servo changed. Keep, keep so, servo. okay, we'll show you from here. Okay, yeah. pound on the desk. Keep going. The yellow light's coming on. It got there three go. good values, and it unlocked. So there you go. I guess we're done here. Thanks for watching.